Hi, I am Dr. Sinja. In this video, I will start talking about the classifications of keratoconus and other ectopic corneal disorders. But at the beginning, I will discuss some differences between the three main topographers, the Galilei, the Cyrus, and the Pentacap. This video is very important since it is an introduction to the management modalities. I hope you will enjoy. In the last videos, I talked about diagnostic tools. In this video, I will talk about the uh, classification of ectopic corneal disorders. But before starting with the, with the uh, classification, um, I'd like to mention some differences between the three major topographers, the Cyrus, the Galilei, and the Pentacam. This is the Scheinflug camera, the principle of the Scheinflug uh, camera, which is a lateral uh, camera taking captures of the uh, media of the eye uh, through which the uh, uh, central blue uh, slit light uh, penetrates and uh, uh, this is the uh, image uh, given by the Scheinflug camera uh, as we see here we have we can see the cornea the anterior chamber the anterior surface of the iris and a part of the lens of course, we can see the full thickness of the lens when the pupil is fully dilated before taking uh, the uh, capture. Now, this uh, Chimeflug camera is integrated into the three uh, topographers, but it is a single Chimeflug camera in the Pentacam, while it is a, a dual, or uh, there are two opposing uh, Chimeflug cameras in the Galilei. Uh, the other difference in the Galilei is that um, there is a Placido disc. Many studies were done in order to compare the Galilei with the Pentacam. Uh, those studies concluded that the data were interchangeable between the two machines. This means that we can apply all the parameters and values that I've mentioned uh, previously in the uh, previous videos. We can apply those uh, on the maps uh, obtained by the Galilei. Now, in the Cyrus, the thing is a bit different. Uh, in the Cyrus, there is only one Scheinflug camera and there is a Placido disc. Many studies were done in order to compare the Cyrus with the other two machines and those studies concluded that the data were not interchangeable between the Cyrus and the other two machines, especially in the elevation maps. Now, since I am a user of the three machines, I could uh, find a rough way uh, to make the elevation maps obtained by the Cyrus comparable to those uh, given by the uh, Pentacam and the Galilei. We go to the main page, we double click on the anterior elevation map, and then we go to the menu bar and click on the advanced altimetry icon. Then we choose from the pick list the first option which is the aspherotoric fitting anterior and the map will be displayed in another mode. We go to the right column and we choose from the pick list the spherical mode and we adjust the surface position into best DZ. In this way we can uh, obtain a map uh, in the spherical uh, mode, uh, which can be uh, comparable to the best fit sphere given by the Galilei uh, or the Pentacam. Uh, from the pick list, also we can uh, choose the aspherotoric mode, uh, which is comparable to the toric ellipsoid mode uh, given by the Pentacam. And in both cases, we can apply the parameters and values that I've mentioned in uh, the Pentacam. We can do the same in the posterior elevation map. We double click on the posterior elevation map. Then we go to the menu bar and choose from the, uh, this icon uh, the option of aspherotoric fitting posterior. Then we go to the right column in order to adjust the spherical in the best DZ or the toric, the aspherotoric with the best DZ also. 
Now there is another difference in the uh, Cyrus, which is the term of the apex. Now the apex in the Pentacam and the Galilei corresponds to the center, the anatomical center of the cornea, but in the Cyrus it corresponds to the point where the maximum K reading is. So whenever we see the apex in the Cyrus, uh, it, it is not the anatomical center of the cornea, it is the K max, corresponds to the K max. Now coming to the classification of keratoconus. Uh, there are two goals uh, for classification of keratoconus. The main goal nowadays is uh, trying to um, develop a new indices uh, with high sensitivity and specificity to detect uh, subclinical cases of keratoconus uh, or what is called pre-stage keratoconus. Uh, the other uh, goal is to grade keratoconus and other ectetic corneal disorders in terms of the best management modality option. But in both cases the classifications are either subjective or objective. I will start with the very uh, early objective classification developed by Rabinovich and Rashid. Uh, it is the KISA index. Uh, it is a quantitative uh, classification based on video keratography uh, algorithm. Now what is KISA? Of course the computer of the machine um, uh, usually measures this KISA but it is uh, helpful for us to know uh, what is it. Now the KISA is an index based on the K the inferior superior difference, the astigmatism, and the uh, skewed radial axis. Now I will discuss this in details. The K refers to K central minus 47.2. The I minus S refers to the inferior minus superior uh, K readings. The Astigmatism, AST, refers to the difference between SIMK1 and SIMK2 in the central 3 mm zone. And SRAX refers to the skewed uh, radial axis uh, index. Now starting with the K. The K refers to the K central minus 47.2. If the K central is less than 47.2, then the result will be in minus value, so the computer inputs 1, while if the K uh, central is larger than 47.2, uh, the computer inputs the uh, uh, resultant fa uh, value. Uh, as in this example, the K central is 46, then the K will be minus 1.2, and the computer inputs 1, and when the K central is 49, as an example, then the K will be 1.8 and the computer will input 1.8. But what is K central? The K central is the average K readings on the th uh, second, third, and fourth rings on the video keratoscope. Next comes I minus S. Uh, which is inferior minus superior uh, K readings. The normal value uh, should be less than 1.4 diopters. But um, the I minus S is calculated um, uh, in a way where five points are uh, determined over the horizon and other five points are determined uh, under the horizon. These five points are 15 degrees apart and 1.5 millimeter away from the uh, center of the cornea. The average of the uh, superior uh, uh, five points uh, uh, is deducted uh, from the average of the inferior uh, five points. And the uh, absolute value uh, should be used because sometimes uh, the uh, superior care readings are higher than the inferior care readings as in uh, the uh, superior steep uh, pattern uh, in, on the curvature map. 
so the absolute value should be used the AST very simply is the uh, SIMK1 minus SIMK2 and the normal value uh, equals or less than 1.5 diopter and you all know uh, the SRAX which is the difference between the uh, axis of the inferior segment and superior segment of the pattern uh, on the curvature map and the normal value equals or less than 22 degrees the normal value of the KISA is less than 60% uh, and it is suspected when it is between 60 and 100% and absolutely normal when it is more than 100% some machines such as the Cyrus uh, has its own software to uh, classify the case and sometimes it gives a warning like suspect of keratoconus we double click on the keratoconus summary and the keratoconus summary page will be displayed and we can see here uh, some uh, indices but usually I do not depend on the uh, uh, classification of the machine uh, I'd like to study all things together uh, but maybe um, we can have an idea when uh, the machine gives us a warning the OCT has also its own part um, in the classification of ectotic corneal disorders depending on some parameters uh, especially uh, based on the uh, pachymetry map but the most advanced recent uh, technology is the epithelial uh, thickness uh, mapping the ATM um, it gives a map of the uh, epithelium in the central six millimeter uh, uh, zone and uh, the thinning of the uh, epithelium is a very early sign of ectotic disorders that precedes the uh, uh, focal thinning of the stroma in uh, these uh, diseases returning to the subjective and objective uh, classifications the subjective classifications can be uh, morphology uh, based on morphology uh, tomography uh, chromish emsler or the retix uh, starting with the morphology morphologically the cone can be a uh, nipple oval or globus this classification is important for contact lens fitting the uh, tomography classification uh, is uh, either based on the uh, elevation maps or on the uh, pachymetry map uh, the one based on the elevation map classifies the cone the location of the cone on the elevation map using the best fit sphere mode uh, into central cone when the center of the cone falls into the central three millimeter zone peripheral cone when the center of the cone falls uh, out of the five millimeter zone and paracentral cone when it falls the center of the cone falls in between this classification is very important uh, for intracorneal segment implantation and this will be discussed in details when we come to the management modalities the pachymetry based classifies uh, the uh, uh, diseases into dome shape bell shape which is a hallmark uh, and very specific uh, to uh, pellucid marginal generation and keratoglobus now this classification is very important in order to uh, um, to show uh, the case of keratoglobus uh, and uh, in order to differentiate between pellucid marginal generation and the pellucid like keratoconus as will be discussed later in details the Amsler Cromish classification it is the earliest subjective classification uh, it was developed in 1991 and it grades the uh, disease into uh, four uh, stages uh, depending on the average K readings the central thickness of the cornea the spherical equivalent uh, of the refractive error 
and the status of the cornea in terms of corneal transparency and the presence or absence of uh, a scar. Later on, other classifications came to develop or to modify the Amsler Kromish. Uh, in 2006, Alio and Shabaik uh, replaced the spherical equivalent uh, by the RMS uh, of coma-like high-order uh, aberrations. Lately, in 2013, Canelopoulos and Asimilis uh, also uh, added to this uh, classification uh, two indices. Uh, one is the ISV, the index of surface variance, and the other one is KI, the keratoconus index. Finally, the RETEX classification. The RETEX classification was developed in 2011 by Viga Estrada, Alio, Mikael, and Baraker. The RETEX was developed after a multicenter study to find the visual and refractive outcomes of intracorneal ring segments in the treatment of keratoconus. So the RETEX was developed in order to predict good visual outcomes in the option of intracorneal ring segments only, not uh, with all uh, modalities of uh, keratoconus management. The RETEX depends on uh, best correct visual acuity, uh, the corrected distance visual acuity, and the average care reading, uh, comma-like uh, high-order aberrations, internal astigmatism, uh, Q value, and the status of the cornea in terms of uh, corneal transparency. Uh, the internal astigmatism is the difference between manifest astigmatism and anterior corneal astigmatism. Uh, this uh, classification uh, grades uh, uh, the uh, case uh, into uh, grade 1, 2, 3, 4, and 4 plus. And I will talk about this classification when I come to the uh, intracorneal ring segment implantation option uh, when talking about the management uh, modalities uh, in the coming videos. I will stop here and in the coming video I will talk about that the difference between keratoconus, foam frost keratoconus, pellucid marginal degeneration, pellucid like keratoconus, and the iatrogenic ectasia.